Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. It is Friday, I hope you all are doing well. Sorry for the lack of uploads this week. A uh, couple of reasons really, I've been a little bit manic with some things in work. Uh, obviously we were in Leeds at the beginning of the week. We obviously done the game review to Everton's 1-0 defeat to Arsenal on Tuesday and then there's not really been much going on since then. There's been a little bit of news and information over the last couple of days or so which we're going to talk about in today's video. We will also have the game preview to Everton's Premier League fixture against Brentford. That will be up a little bit later on today. But before then, I thought we'd sit down and have a little bit of a discussion about some of the news that we've been reading over the last 24 hours or so. And the reason that I haven't really wanted to jump on and, 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 and sit down and talk about this news before today is because I, I felt a little bit... I just didn't feel great coming on constantly and talking about what feels like negative news every single day. I don't want this channel to just become a place where I come on every night and I basically just sit down with everyone for an hour and we all feel dead down and dead depressed and dead sad and dead annoyed about Everton and we do it every single day. I didn't want it to be like that. Now, don't get me wrong, I will always be me and I will always give my honest opinion and I will always say how I feel. I'll never come on here and talk about something that I think is a negative thing and try and spin it positively for the sake of the channel I won't do that if something needs talking about and it's negative then I will say it exactly how it is that's always how I've been and that's always how I will be but that doesn't mean that I get massive enjoyment out of coming on here and talking constantly about the absolute circus that is Everton Football Club at the moment and over the last few days we've had some news and some information that hasn't necessarily been the most positive news in the world and whilst you know I, I thought you'll jump on shall we have a little conversation about this I also thought you know what no let's let's give everyone a break let's have a couple of days where we don't have to worry about Everton you know we haven't won a Premier League game so far we've got Brentford away at the weekend which is another extremely difficult fixture do I really need to be coming on on a Wednesday or a Tuesday and talking about the shit show that is Everton Football Club. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a few days rest. We'll come back on Friday. We'll do a general sort of news overview. And then obviously we'll look ahead to tomorrow's game against Brentford, which of course will be <clears throat> another extremely difficult game of football and, and one that I'm sorry, but you know, you can call me negative, you can call me a pessimist, you can call me whatever. I'm not confident Everton will get anything out of this one tomorrow, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. For now, let's talk about some of the latest news and rumours. Uh, we read earlier on in the week that 777 Partners co-founder Josh Wanda has met with Sean Dyche and Kevin Thelwell at Finch Farm on Tuesday with discussions being described as extremely positive. Sean Dyche had his press conference yesterday ahead of tomorrow's Premier League fixture against Brentford. He spoke about meeting with 777. He said they were very honest, more getting a feeling of what our thoughts were and my thoughts were since coming into the football club. Uh, he said, very casual at this stage. They made it clear to us the deal has got a long way to go until it's fat finality uh, most of it was casual to be honest what I've learned here and the new challenges so it seems like <clears throat> 777 well it doesn't seem like it's very evident because it's come from the horse's mouth it's you know itself that 777 have already been at Finch Farm sitting down with Sean Dice, sitting down with Kevin Thelwell and having those types of conversations around the football club surrounding you know his position how happy he is in, in his position how he feels that it is going and, and I think it's important that those talks take place now again 777 have come in you know under a lot of criticism over the last few weeks or so especially since the takeover was sort of announced or it was you know it was announced that there was agreements in place there's a lot of negative information out there about 777 about their involvement with other clubs about some of their uh, involvement in things that have happened in the past and, and how capable or uncapable they are of running a, a Premier League football club um, and you know, we, we, we've sat down a couple of times over the last couple of weeks and we spoke about a lot of those negatives and tried to weigh up, you know, the, the, the situation that Everton find themselves in. And I do think it is only fair to give credit where credit is due. And I, and I say that constantly. I say that about managers. If a manager 
is you know is is not performing particularly well and then we win a game and the tactics are great then i'll come out and i'll say you know what fair play to them they, they changed that game today and i think we, we we have to give you know even if it is a little bit of criticism to 777 i'm not saying that because they've done this they are now the perfect owners and we should be absolutely made up with them but it is a positive that this early on into the you know the sale and this early on this early on into the um you know, into the, the, the sort of their involvement with Everton Football Club. They've already sat down with the manager. They've already sat down <coughs> with the director of football to try and gauge their thoughts and their opinions on the football club as a whole. And I'm sure those conversations, although Sean Dice describes them as very casual at this moment and just getting a feel of the club, I'm sure those conversations, um, you know, that were taking place involved what the manager thinks about the, the football club as a whole, about the running of the football club, about how the football club has been managed financially, how the football club has been managed on and off the pitch over the last few years or so. <clears throat> I'm sure... The conversations with Kevin Thelwell were somewhat similar, how he feels about the football club's finances, how difficult it makes his job to be able to go and bring in players to improve the squad, given the situation that we're in financially. So, you know, again, I'm not, you know, trying to be the person that, you know, sort of throws out there that 777 are absolutely brilliant and they're going to be amazing for Everton because I don't know that. None of us know that. And I think that is... That's the main point to realise here is we can all have an opinion and we can all have an opinion based upon what we're reading in the media or in the news or on the internet and our opinions can be formed based upon other people's experiences with 777 but the reality is there is absolutely nobody on this planet that categorically 100% knows what 777 are going to do with Everton Football Club and whether or not it is going to be a success or whether or not it is going to be a failure. Certain evidence is out there to suggest that it's more likely to be a failure because of their involvement with other clubs, but we don't know categorically 100% whether or not this is going to be the best thing to ever happen to Everton Football Club or the worst thing to ever happen to Everton Football Club. All as we know is the information that is out there about other football clubs. The only thing we know about 777 and their involvement with Everton at the moment, other than there's an agreement that has taken place or sorry other than that there's agreements in place is that they've already met with the manager they've already met with the director of football and they're already having those conversations despite as they say themselves this sort of deal being months away from being finalized so that's a positive for me uh, i think once again it, it, it further <clears throat> uh, is, is further evidence of Farhad Mashiri's tenure at this football club being well and truly done <clears throat> and I said that a couple of weeks ago and, and a lot of people were sort of saying well obviously it's done because we've been sold to somebody else but <clears throat> the reality of the situation is is that the 777 deal hasn't actually officially been announced yet or it hasn't actually officially been confirmed yet there's an agreement in place and that has been announced but as we all know this has to go through the FCA the Financial Conduct Authority it has to go through the Premier League it has to go through a number of people before this is you know confirmed and, and 777 actually take over Everton Football Club now if that doesn't happen for whatever reason if the FCA say we're not happy with it if you know if the Premier League say we're not happy with it and this falls through then obviously that would leave us in a position where Farhad Mashiri still runs Everton Football Club but as I said a couple of weeks ago I think we're beyond that point now I think Farhad Mashiri has well and truly shown that if it isn't going to be 777 for whatever reason and it looks like it will be 777 as I said I'm I'm sort of 85% confident it'll be 777 but if it isn't, it's not just going to be a case of, well, oh, well, Majeri still owns it, so we'll just move on as if nothing happened. I, I think we're at that point now where it's quite evident Farhad Majeri will be selling this football club one way or another. And the fact that Josh Wonder has been allowed into Finch Farm to have those conversations with the manager and the director of football just shows how little involvement Farhad Majeri has at the football club now or how little involvement Farhad Majeri even wants to have. Um, <clears throat> and that ultimately has a direct impact on everything else that happens at the football club. We spoke on Monday, uh, or sorry, on Tuesday in the game review to the Arsenal game about the importance of the next few games coming up and how if Everton are to lose the next three games coming up, then Sean Dyche will probably lose his job. And, and rightly so, if Everton lose to Luton and Bournemouth at home, I'll be perfectly honest, I, I think we will need a new manager in the dugout. Um, however, who is there to make that decision? 
you know, the, the the owner very clearly is having even less involvement now than he had before, and, and he didn't have much before, because he's allowing the new owners to come in and have those conversations, we haven't got a board, you know, our board is made up of interim um, positions of people that ultimately will not be there in the coming months or so, so, you know, who knows, maybe Sean Dyche will remain in an Everton job regardless of the results until, sorry, will remain in his job regardless of the results until the takeover is completed, and then maybe Josh Wander's got the, you know, the ability to make that decision, ultimately we we don't really know uh we will we'll have to wait and see but i i do think uh, and again people will come at me and say oh it's the bare minimum they could do but i do think it's a positive that they're being involved so early on you know 777 could have just gone right you know what we're not going to even bat an eyelid at this we're not going to have any involvement in it we don't want to even hear about it until it's officially confirmed and we are the owners of this football club but they haven't they've decided to go in they've decided to you know to, to get the ball rolling already which which i think is is is, is a positive of ultimately and, and and again <clears throat> I'm not defending them <clears throat> I'm not saying they'll be great I'm not saying we should all love them now I'm just saying in a situation where there are a lot of negatives I think this it happens to be a positive uh in regards to the negative surrounding 777, they seem to be constant at the moment uh we read from Matt Hughes at the Daily Mail uh, a couple of days ago that multiple Premier League owners are set to voice concerns about Everton's proposed sale to 777 partners. Teams are worries. Teams' worries are understood to be centred on the uncertainty over the source of 777 funding for the £500 million deal. I'm not sure why Premier League owners are particularly worried about Everton's takeover in terms of Everton or in terms of 777 not being able to fund the takeover, maybe it's because ultimately the Premier League uh, is ran by the 20 clubs and every decision that is made by the Premier League is voted on by the clubs and has to be voted on by the clubs. So maybe that's, you know, maybe the clubs ultimately are, are sort of thinking mm, we don't really want this to go ahead because we don't think there is a guaranteed cash flow to be able to sustain it. Um, again, <clears throat> whether or not anything comes of this, we will wait and see. Uh, there was a, a few rumours a couple of weeks ago about the government wanting to step in and, and, and actually put a halt to the 777 takeover of Everton Football Club and that those reports were rubbished fairly quickly and, and it was actually um, it was actually reported that the government had no issue whatsoever with the 777 takeover. So there'll be a lot of stuff in the news at the moment. There'll be a lot of stuff in the media. There'll also be a lot of questions surrounding stuff like this. Premier League clubs are wanting to stop the takeover of Everton Football Club. Well, why? What is their motivation for that? Is their motivation generally because they've got Everton's best interests at hand, or is their motivation because they think, hang on, do you know what? These people could be backed by serious, serious billionaires here, and if they come in and Everton, you know, ultimately become stronger and financially stronger, then that's another competitor for us to deal with. So, um, yeah, again, it, it, it's a story. It's worth talking about. It's worth understanding, but whether or not it actually has any sort of impact on on the takeover of the football club uh, remains to be seen, of course. Uh, the Athletic did report that Everton's loan of 777 partners is to help Everton stay afloat. Everton is struggling to pay their monthly bills. The loan from 777 will cover an immediate cash flow deficit as well as the, the latest construction bill for the new stadium. So that obviously is um in response to david ornstein's report a couple of days ago which was quite a big bit of information really and david ornstein reported that everton have received a sizable loan from pr prospective owner 777 payment worth tens of millions for working capital and stadium build us firm to provide everton multi-club model expertise and join board in observer role during the approval process so <clears throat> yeah Again, like I said before, uh, a lot of negative press at the moment surrounding 777, a lot of negative information, a lot of negative news, a lot of negative uh, reports out there, pardon me, but there is also, you know, the odd positive report in there that I think is maybe getting sort of, you know, uh, swooped under the carpet a little bit because every time you hear of a, a positive bit of information, there's a negative bit of information to go with it. And ultimately, um, <clears throat> this is a positive bit of information. Not only is their involvement with sitting down with the manager and the director of football a positive because it shows that they're wanting to be involved already, but, you know, receiving a loan from them, you know, them understanding that they want to join the board in an observer role while the takeover gets approved. It shows that they're wanting to be involved. It shows that they're, they're motivated. It shows that they are um, 
very very clearly passionate about this project and very very clearly passionate about Everton Football Club being a success and being a success under their tenureship uh, and their ownership and, and ultimately that is a positive for Everton because we we you know I'm not saying by the way seven 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 will ultimately be better than Farhad Mashiri or will be better for Everton than Farhad Mashiri but at least they'll care and I don't care what anybody says you, you I will never be convinced that over the last three years certainly Farhad Mashiri has cared about this football club. I just don't think he has any uh, any care whatsoever about Everton or where Everton are or how successful Everton are or how successful Everton are not. Where the seven 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 clearly have got that um you know that 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 motivation to to um to be a success with Everton Football Club because they're doing all of this before the takeover is even. Uh, <coughs> officially being announced. Uh, Paul Joyce reported that Everton's change of ownership to 777 Partners would trigger a repayment of loans to MSP Sports Capital, Andy Bell and George Downing worth £140 million. So that obviously uh, will be when the takeover is officially completed. That £140 million figure will have to be paid back to, um, to MSP Sports Capital. So yeah, <laughs> again... Like I said, not a lot of information going on over the last sort of 24, 48 hours or so, but certainly some news about MSP. And, and I think what we've had over the last couple of days or so is a couple of positive bits of information. And again, you know, before people lose this shit or get wound up or, you know, I think I'm trying to spin a positive. I've had absolutely no... I know there's a couple of things on social media about Josh Wonder reaching out to a couple of people. I have had no <coughs> contact with Josh Wonder. I have had no contact with 777. I've had no contact with Everton Football Club. I've had no contact with Farhad Mashiri. Everything I'm saying now is purely off of my thoughts, my opinions, and I haven't spoken to anybody involved in this situation whatsoever. And my opinions and thoughts are, is this still a massively worrying situation? Yes, of course it is. Am I still absolutely terrified that 777 are going to come in and ultimately not be able to run this football club and run it even worse than what Farhad Bashiri has? Yes, I am. However, <coughs> I also understand that nobody truly knows what the outcome of this situation is going to be. And by the outcome, I mean the outcome of 777's ownership of Everton Football Club. Nobody knows whether or not it's going to be great. Nobody knows whether or not it's going to be negative. There's a lot of stuff out there to suggest that it's more likely to be negative, but that it ultimately doesn't prove the point. So F777 could come in and go, do you know what? You're our biggest football club. You're in the Premier League. You're the football club that we want to succeed the most because realistically, you will make the most money if you do. So we're going to give everything to you and we're going to make sure that you are, even if every one of our other clubs are not great, we're going to make sure that you are the top sort of football club that we uh, own and, and, and we want to make you a success. And they may be able to do that. They mightn't be able to do that. But one thing's for sure is Farhad Mashiri and Bill Kenwright certainly can't do that. So, you know, and, and, and like I said, I, I do think it's important to highlight these things that are happening. You know, seven, Josh Wanda going into Finch Farm and talking to uh, Kevin Thelwell and Sean Dice, whether you like the 777 takeover or not, whether you think it'll be a good thing or a bad thing for Everton, that is a positive because that shows that they're wanting to be involved already. And, you know, I, I'd love to have, 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 have had the conversation with Josh Wonder after that conversation with Sean Dyson said to him, what do you actually think of this manager? Because he might have come out and gone, I like Sean, I think he's great, but ultimately if the results don't improve, he, he will lose his job. And that's the reality of the situation, isn't it? Or is he going to be like a Ken Rice or a Machiri? No, we love him and, and ultimately he's the best thing that, that's ever happened to us, so he's going to stay at the club forever and ever and ever. Who knows? We don't know the answer to those questions yet and we won't know the answer to those questions until this deal is finalised and the answer might be a good answer for Everton and it mightn't be a good answer for Everton but ultimately, as I said, nobody quite knows that yet um, until this situation is uh, is sorted, completed, signed off and we're under new ownership but until then, we'll continue to read the articles, we'll continue to report on them and we'll continue to give our thoughts and opinions on them because that is what we are here for. Anyway, we are going to leave it there. If you have enjoyed this one, just a little video to start off with. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below on everything that we have spoken about. Uh, we will be back with the game preview to the Arsenal game a little bit later on today. So don't forget, to, sorry, the Brentford game a little bit later on today. So don't forget to look out for that one. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, please, please do leave a like. It does only take a second. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. That would mean a huge, huge, huge amount to me. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of 
interesting content coming up over the next couple of weeks or so i want to take a, a more in-depth look into 777 sit down with a couple of people uh, and have a conversation about what we can expect with these people coming into the football club but as of now it's clear that they're wanting to get started. It's clear that they're wanting to be involved with the football club. It's clear that already they're wanting to um, find out about everything that is going on and how they can affect that. Um, and yeah, let's wait and see what more we read over the next couple of weeks. Big, big thanks for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you do. And we'll see you later.